So um, I'm Ipe Song. I'm a clinical fellow at the Christie Hospital. I've just started doing an MD. Um, prior to this, I was a clinical oncology registrar, and I will still call myself that. I've just come out of program for two years to pursue an MD. So my job here is really easy because Rebecca's talked about clinical oncology. Sophie's talked about academia. My job is done. But the truth, really, it about clinical oncology is that it is an academic specialty. You've heard you know, from the other speakers about how in oncology things are ever evolving, things are always changing. So to give you an example, I was studying for my um, final exams and the lung oncology I learned at ST3 didn't matter anymore because things have changed so much in about two and a half years. And it's very interesting because you also then get to see you know, things that is developing being applied into clinical work. The other thing is that as a clinical oncologist, you will be seeing patients who are part of a clinical trial. So you will have contact with academia whether you like it or not. The specialty in itself is an academic specialty. So the joys of it... Sophie talks about having a really, really busy day. I drink tea, I eat cake, and I think up ways to go to let someone let you know send me off far away to go to a conference. But the truth really is the variety involved. So as a clinical fellow, I work with a variety of people, and within the team, there are doctors, nurses, scientists, statisticians, physicists. So I sit in a room at the moment where behind me are three physicists. They speak a language I don't really understand, but they're good fun. They know, you know, unlike doctors, they know when it's time to go for lunch. It's great. Um, I have trials nurses that I work with very closely, and um, there are scientists as well, and of course there are the doctors and, and other specialties involved. Um, and you also work with people from other centres because there's a lot of collaboration that goes on within academia. Then it's the work itself, the variety with regards to the type of work you can undertake. I get bored really easily, and I think that's why I picked clinical oncology to start off with. And then academia just meant that, ooh, there are no more things to do. Great fun. So you get to pick between wanting to do, say, a lab-based research, a radiotherapy-type research, a more clinical thing, um, look into education, health economics. There is such a variety of what you, what you can do as an, academ as an academic person. So how do you really get there? A lot of times people say things like, I haven't got an ACF, can I go into academics? Well, yes you can. The more direct and straightforward route in academia would be to do an academic, um, be an academic clinical fellow and then um, be an academic clinical lecturer. But I came through what I think of as the more traditional route. I got my training number through the national recruitment, and now I'm doing an out-of-program spell. And your out-of-program opportunities then also means it can be just about anywhere in the world. So I've got friends and colleagues who are doing um, fellowships in other parts of the UK, people who have gone to America, people who have spent a lot of time in Canada and Australia. And you can do as much or as little as you want to do. It could be a fellowship, for a year, you can do an MD for two years, you can do a PhD for three years. So really, there is so much variety out there. This is just an example of the route to get there, okay? So you can take your out of program at any, any natural break in your training, be it between exams or after your finals, um, or you can do it after you finish training. It's really you know, you really have very many different paths to get there, and you will find that as a clinical oncology trainee, you get so much support to get to that point of doing what you want to do. I went to my supervisor as an ST3 and said, I've never done any research before in my life, but I quite fancy this idea. And they helped make, me, make it happen for me. And then when you get there, it's really a large range of 
what you can be. So you could be a clinician that sees a couple of trials patients, all the way to you can hide in the lab and not see any patient and be a scientist. Or you could be a clin clinician scientist like Sophia's, um, and it's a huge spectrum of what you can do. So I think that's all I have to say about academic clinical oncology, and I'll just pass you on then to what consultant life is about.